Hi there, Slow Down Society. Let's talk podcasting. Have you ever wanted to start a podcast of your very own? I wanted to alert you that Riverside.fm is the leading podcast and video creation platform. It's just as easy to use as Zoom. And trust me, I am not decky. I think we all know that. But this is super easy to use and they even have a mobile app. Also, a super crazy cool feature about Riverside.fm is that after you record, you can easily grab clips and sound bites to share across your social media channels. If you're ready to plunge into the fun and exciting world of podcasting, you really can't go wrong with Riverside FM. Use the promo code SHIPIT, that is S-H-I-P-I-T, for an immediate 30% discount on your first three months. Okay, back to the episode. You are listening to the Slow Living Podcast, and I'm your host, Stephanie O'Day. What if I told you that you could truly have the life of your dreams, the life you've always wanted, one filled with abundance, joy, and a sense of purpose? It's absolutely possible, and I see it each and every day with my coaching clients. It all starts with learning how to slow down. You deserve to live the life you've always dreamt about. Let's get started. Okay. Hi there, Slow Down Society. We are on episode eight, which means we've been at this for a while. And thank you so much for all of the emails and the comments and the reviews that are coming in. I'm so happy to be doing this project and I'm so happy to have a different part of my personality and the things that I'm interested that I'm able to talk about and share with you. So thank you. Keep the great reviews coming. Send me a voicemail or a question at any time, Stephanie O'Day forward slash podcast. But I'm here for you and I want this to be something that, that serves you and sort of nourishes your soul as we, as we move forward. So I'm very into all things slow living. And for me, just as a bit of a recap, slow living doesn't mean that you're just kind of lazing around and, and lying around and, and waiting for life to happen to you. Instead, to me, it means that you are slowly and methodically and carefully and thoughtfully living out the life that you want to, the life of your dreams. And you've taken the time to sort of plot it out and plan it out to the best that you can. And then bit by bit, baby step by baby step, you move forward and you take action. Your intuition gives you a hunch or a nudge and you think, huh, that's actually a really good idea. I'm going to go for that and those type of things. And it also is sort of a mindset of staying in the here and the now and not fretting and and worrying about the future and not dwelling and kind of reliving over and over again things that have happened in the past. But it's staying in the here and the now and trying your hardest to be as positive and sort of surround yourself with positivity and things that are uplifting and joyful because that's what keeps you wanting to move forward. If you're dwelling on the past and and you're feeling bummed out about something, it's really easy to sort of fall into this kind of victim-y, woe-is-me mindset and not really want to do anything anymore. Just kind of want to veg out in this kind of depressy way. And, and it doesn't necessarily mean you are depressed or you're, or you're clinically depressed in any way. It just means you're in this kind of funkity funk funk. And if you're in this funk for too long, it becomes a habit. And, and so that's what I try and help people break through and sort of shifting the mindset to, to one of joy and of peace and something that you're excited because that is what helps move you forward in life. It can kind of seem sometimes a little Pollyanna-ish and like rose-colored glasses and, and not real. And real life has twists and turns and bends in the road and really, really 
bad, awful, hurtful, disappointing, and sad things that happen. And and I'm not one to gloss over that. This is absolutely real life. This is not a Lifetime or a Hallmark movie where a director is just going to kind of Photoshop and, and airbrush all of the nastiness away. I'm recording this. We're in the fall of 2021 and the holidays are coming up. Thanksgiving is coming up right after Thanksgiving's Hanukkah. And then there's Christmas and we're not all the way through this pandemic. We're, we're not all the way through this kind of really icky and gross time that we're living. There, there's, there's definitely wonderful things that have come out in our family. We've got, I have a, a brand new baby nephew who's a week old, who is just a joy. But along with the nephew being born, we've lost members of the family who have passed away. We have had things happen and, and many of my friends have had things happen and, and definitely extended family and friends of friends. There, there's definitely some, some stuff that has happened that has not been okay. And, and I am not trying to gloss over that in any way. What I try and do for myself and what I try and teach and model for my children and I try and help my coaching clients is to acknowledge and pay attention and think it through and move forward as best you can. And though I'm, I'm a very visual person, so I sort of think of it as like you're, you're stuck in a swamp or you're stuck in kind of this bogged, bogged down sort of foggy situation. And the best way through it is to just get through it. And it's not fun. And a lot of times it is not fair and bad things absolutely happen. There's violence in the world. There's horrific accidents. There's natural disasters. I, I am not glossing over any of that. My, my best suggestion to you is to try and control the things you can control. So if the news stresses you out and it puts you in a bad mood, don't watch it. If the neighbor down the street, it doesn't matter what the weather is, he's going to complain and remind you that there's a storm brewing or we're in a drought or, or all of these things. And it doesn't matter how big your smile is and how lovely your good morning is. He puts you in that kind of mood. Walk the other way. Just cross the street. Just smile and wave and act as if you're on the phone or listening to a podcast. Listen to me. But, but don't put yourself in situations that you know aren't good for your brain and don't put you in a good mood. Are you wondering if you're on the right path? Are you secretly worried that you are forgetting to put your own needs and wants first while you raise your family? What if I told you it is not too late and you really could have the dream life you've always wanted and all it would take is a few tweaks to your mindset? Each week, I have a few open slots for free coaching calls together we can decipher your most challenging mindset block and clear it away so you can live out the life you've always wanted. You can sign up at stephanieoday.com forward slash mindset. You should hurry because I'm not sure how long I'm going to have this available for free and I'd hate for you to miss out. The URL again is stephanieoday.com forward slash mindset. Along with the questions and the comments and the emails that I get, here and there, people write to me and they share their stories. And, and some of them break my heart and, and they actually make me burst into tears because I know this is such a trying time for so, so many. And, and please know that I think you guys are great. I think you're awesome. And I, I personally read every single email and, and every comment and, and try my hardest to respond to all of them. And at times it can sort of weigh me down and make me feel like there's, there's a weight on my shoulders or on my chest. I'm able to shift that and, and see what I can do to push through that and, and to help and try and, and frame my answers and my, my responses in a way that I hope 
are as helpful and as uplifting and, and try and steer you in the right direction as I possibly can. I do have a, a listener question from Laura who called in. And so I want to play that for you. And Laura, just know that I heard your message and I played it quite a few times and I really thought on it and I journaled on it and, and my heart is with you. Hello, Stephanie. I just listened to your podcast and I cannot congratulate you enough. It was lovely. I applaud your honesty with exactly how you felt. And I'm so happy for you that you're on a new path. I just lost my husband very recently and very suddenly. So it was just the two of us. And um, there is so much to do that is overwhelming. I'm trying to do what he used to do and what I always did and figure things out. It's, It's just... Anything but slow living. Of course, missing him so very much. So I wondered if you had any suggestions for a person living alone for the first time in her life, basically, and to slow down and not feel this huge overwhelm that I feel. So much I have to go through, get rid of things, so forth and so on. And I don't want to get more anxious or stressed out than I already am. So if you have any suggestions, that would be very helpful. Again, congratulations. You did a great job and continued success. Thank you. Okay. Laura, thank you so much for taking the time to record a message and for reaching out. If there was a way that I could hug you through this microphone, please know that I would. And I'm so terribly sorry for your loss. And I can only imagine how you're thinking and you're feeling. And just please know that we are all here hugging you as much as we can and trying to lift you up as we collectively can through cyberspace. One thing I want to acknowledge is you mentioned the word overwhelm a few times, and it's absolutely an overwhelming time that you're going through, but you have to process the grief first. So I don't know if the overwhelm is that there's a lot to do when it comes to closing up your husband's estate. I don't know if you mean overwhelm because the stuff you wanted to do is not happening. And who cares right now if your house is a mess? And and who cares right now if your back garden needs weeding or mowing or anything? So I don't want you to put any pressure on yourself in any way to do anything except for get through your days in the healthiest way That is absolutely possible for you. So right now is the time for as much self-care as you possibly can muster. If you get the whim to go on a walk and get some fresh air, do it. If you get the thought, I am so tired, I just want to go take a nap, go take a nap. Listen to your inner voice. Listen to those nudges and and voices from God and from the universe that, that are whispering to you to take care of yourself do it. Absolutely do it. Grief, everyone handles in a different way. And it's very, very personal. It doesn't matter if your best friend lost her husband a while ago, and now she does this, that, or the other. Your journey is going to be completely and totally different than anyone else's. I would like to share a resource with you. I met Karen. So a friend of mine, his name is Karen, and she runs a website called widowsinmotion.com. So it's all one word, widowsinmotion.com. And she also has a supportive Facebook group. I met her during, oh gosh, I guess it was the early spring of this year, 2021. Yikes. Oh my gosh. Time is leaving me. It was either 2021 or 2020, uh, 2020, but It was through a coach training that we did. So she's a certified life coach as well. And she works with widows. 
That said, you can access her website and the Facebook group without being a paying client. And, and that might be a, a nice resource for you to scroll through the Facebook group and, and see where other people are at on their own personal journey and path as they navigate through this sort of uncertain time. And perhaps you can take some solace in seeing that you're not alone and that other people have had the same sort of thoughts and feelings and occurrences happen. But also what's really interesting is when you are able to look through a group situation like that, sometimes you then are able to offer help and advice to others. And that can be a very healing part for you of, of your process as, as you go through this new chapter in your life. And, and it's this new chapter that you didn't think you were going to have to deal with. And so along with the grief of losing your husband and losing your best friend and all of these things, you also need to grieve the life that you thought you were going to have because it is now changed. It is not what you imagined when you got married. It's, it's not what you thought your retirement would look like and, and what old age might look like and the different vacations you thought you would have and the different experiences. My friend Maria, I met through one of my first online friend groups. We were the one hot mamas. I met them when I was in my early 20s and Maria was, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 years older, but she lost her husband, Perry, and it broke my heart. And she was my first friend to have lost a husband. And she honors him often on Facebook and on Instagram. And I had met him a few times during some of our get-togethers. But I think of her, and the word that comes to mind is strong. But I would not imagine in a million years she would describe herself that way. Maybe she does now, but at the time, I'm sure she didn't. Because her whole world was knocked over. And your whole world has now been knocked over, Laura. So just know that there's time. There's time to get all the things done. You are not in a race. There is no ticking clock saying you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this. You're behind. You are not behind. You are exactly where you're supposed to be. And you are where you are as you go through this grieving process. When it comes to dealing with the overwhelm that you describe, after you've processed your grief, you can make a plan of attack for the things that you want to get done. But remember, when things pause, when, when your goals pause because you're, you're dealing with a huge traumatic event or death in a family, sickness, illness, a natural disaster, a car accident, something big and huge, if whatever you are working towards got paused, just acknowledge it. It is what it is. It doesn't mean you've necessarily fallen behind. You've just paused and you're not going to lose ground on whatever that is. Okay. So I hope that helps just a bit. And for the rest of you, please know that you are not alone going through grief. And when you're going through feelings of overwhelm and that sort of frantic -y feeling, the, the best thing you can do is to just stop and take a few deep breaths and acknowledge your thoughts and your feelings and, um, and take action on what feels the best for you. So I like to use the analogy of do the things that you feel drawn towards, that you feel pulled into and, and pulled towards versus the things that you're, you feel pushed or shoved towards because th that doesn't feel as good. So slowly and thoughtfully go in that way. Okay, I think you are all wonderful and consider yourself loved and hugged and reach out to me at any time. I am here for you and thank you so much and I will see you next week. Bye-bye. Do you have a slow living story to share? Leave me a voicemail at stephanieoday.com forward slash podcast with any questions, comments,
feedback, or testimonials, and I will be sure to include it in an upcoming episode. Also, if you found value in this episode, please share it with your family and friends and subscribe through your favorite podcast provider. The more you share, comment, and leave positive reviews, the more people we can reach and share the slow living lifestyle and messaging. Thank you, Slow Down Society, and have an absolutely wonderful day.